creating a portfolio that has a stream of passive income on a monthly basis that simply pays you dividends or compounds your interest on your body of investment a little bit faster is something that arguably can be the best strategy for a long-term investment. And in this video, we're going to go ahead and talk about eight different ETFs that pay you monthly dividends. Number eight on our list today is going to be PFF, iShares Preferred and Income Securities ETF. The main goal of this ETF is to provide a well-diversified portfolio with no securities weighted for more than 2.54% of the total body of the investment. In other words, this is done in order to create this stable environment where no securities are weighted more than that 2.54% to eliminate the high fluctuations during the times of volatility on the market, ensuring the stability of those monthly dividend payouts. The main area of focus for PFF revolves around the finance sector. So they allocate about 63.04% to that sector. And then the second sector is going to be in the utilities. They allocate about 13, 13.5% to it, depending on the time when you're investing into the fund. They have shares like BlackRock Cash Fund, Wells Fargo, they invest into Bank of America, as well as some other ones like Next Era, Energy Incorporation, etc. As you can see, there are companies that represent the financial sector as well as the actual utility center within the top eight holdings of the portfolio of the CTF. As we are progressing into the list of all the ETFs that we're going to talk about today, we're going to see that they will progressively become a little bit more risky. So this specific ETF will earn one out of five on the risk scale when it comes to long-term purchase and hold. Shares of this ETF are currently trading at around $33 a share with a low of $31.84 during the most recent recession. It was also able to successfully recover from its previous highs and continue to pay monthly dividends. PFF currently has 4.47% annual percentage yield with the expense ratio of 0.46%. Number seven on our list today is going to be DHS or Wisdom Tree United States High Dividend Fund. When it comes to this specific ETF, it focuses mainly on the large cap stock companies across the United States equity markets that pay dividends. 89.42% of the invested funds in this ETF go into the large cap stocks valued at over $12.8 billion. DHS can be a better choice for those who are trying to invest in the long term, just buy and hold and then compound the interest of their investment. By purchasing shares of DHS, investors usually give themselves exposure to those high dividend paying stocks, large cap companies within the United States, and then they split those dividend payouts that companies normally pay on a quarterly basis into monthly chunks, and then they pay it out to their investors. They somewhat overweigh the energy and telecommunication companies by having a smaller exposure across the tech and healthcare industries. We can see it across the top eight holdings, which include ExxonMobil, we have Chevron, Coca-Cola, Philip Morris, Pfizer, as well as some other ones. Now let's take a look at the historic chart of the performance of this ETF. DHS is currently trading at about $87.40 per share. And back in 2008, 2009 financial crisis, they dropped down to about $18 a share. All the way up until 2019, beginning of 2020, they were able to successfully recover to $75, $77 a share. And then after the most recent recession, which dropped the price of the stock down to about $50 a share, they were able to successfully recover within just about a year or so. And they ended up beating the previous highs and got up to about current price of $87, $86 a share. We can also witness that DHS used to pay quarterly dividends up until the middle of 2012. However, diversification allowed this ETF to pay dividends on a monthly basis. So strong growth continued even through the change that was implemented, which speaks to the efficacy of the specific ETF. And due to the rising interest rates and the current inflation, I would assign two out of five on the risk scale for this specific ETF. Now let's talk about the dividend rates and the expense ratio that DHS has. DHS is currently paying 3.79% in yearly dividends and it has the expense ratio of 0.38%. This means that on a $10,000 investment, the investor would normally pay about $38 per year. So at this point, it is very important for us to establish at least a bottom line understanding of what the common stock is and the preferred stock. This would allow us as investors to make a better determination according to our goals on the strategy that we want to use in order to achieve our goal when it comes to the investment portfolio. The main difference between the preferred stock and the common stock is that the preferred stock acts more like a bond with a set dividend rate and has a lower volatility than the common stock. While the common stock dividends are less guaranteed and carry more risk or loss in case if the company fails. And of course, there's more potential for the common stock appreciation value than with the preferred stock. Even though the name of the preferred stock might 
suggest that it's a better investment than the common stock, you have to look at the environment in which we're in, which is higher interest rates and higher inflation rates. And so common stocks don't do as well during that environment when compared to the preferred stocks. But during the times of economic expansion, preferred stocks tend to underperform when it compared to the common stocks, so the growth stock. For those who want to learn a little bit more about the main differences between these two types of stocks, feel free to pause the video and look over the table that is on the screen, or just consider joining our Discord group where we would upload this document into the Discord chat. Number six on our list today is the common stock ETF with the ticker symbol CII. Black BlackRock Enhanced Capital and Income Fund. It is focused on building a diversified portfolio of common stocks in the attempt to generate monthly dividend payouts and by selling call options on equity indexes. All of that is to say that this ETF focuses on the growth stocks and promises to pay monthly dividends according to their dividend payouts. They also utilize strategies of selling call options of index funds that track the components of the financial markets. For example, different components of the market could be represented by big tech industry, pharmaceutical, or even decentralized finance index. And we can see it by looking at the top eight holdings of this ETF, which include Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, Apple, United Health Group, Meta, previous Facebook, Visa, as well as some other ones. They are heavily invested into the growth stocks that tend to have a lot more volatility during the economic uncertainty. And this creates a lot of new opportunities because it puts to test the financials of the companies that this ETF holds. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the chart where this ETF is trading at right now and the period of performance and the recovery during the most recent recession. Back in 2008-2009 financial crisis, the PII had dropped down to about $9.70 a share or even down to $9 or even $8.39 a share. So right now it has been increasing in value and has been pretty steady, uh, revolving around $14 to $15 a share up until beginning of 2020, where it dropped down all the way to $11.21. It was able to then successfully recover to its previous highs and even beat those highs all the way up to $22.12 a share, which ever since then it was able to drop because the interest rates were going up and the current price at which it's trading about $18.42 a share. The CII currently pays 6.13 annualized dividend and it has the expense ratio of 0.91%. This means that on a $10,000 investment, on average, you would pay about $91 while making approximately $613 a year in case if the price of the ETF doesn't change. Normally, I would assign about two out of five on the risk scale for the specific ETF. However, because of the rising interest rates and high inflation, we're gonna rate it at three out of five. When creating the list of the monthly paying dividend ETFs, there were two main criteria that I used to create this list. One of them is being the growth potential and recovery potential during the recessions. So when it comes to growth potential, is that pretty much when you're looking at the technical analysis off the specific ETF, you're looking at the expense ratio and the dividend payouts that they pay, you have to take into consideration how the stock, how that ETF, the price of it, was performing over the course of last couple of years. So if the price of the ETF was $100 a share, and then it dropped down to $90 a share, losing that about 10% of the value, but it, at the same time still pays 10% in dividends. By the end of the year, you're not going to have $100, even with a compound interest on that account, if the value drops by $10, and you still earn 10% in dividends per year. Which leads me into another point, which is you have to look at the recovery of the specific price of this ETF during the economic uncertainty, like for instance, most recent recession. Now with this in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at number five ETF on our list today, which is SPHD or Invesco S&P 500 High Dividend Low Volatility ETF. One of my personal favorites, this fund is obligated to invest at least 90% of the total assets into the common stocks that comprise of the S&P 500. This ETF consists of 50 securities that historically provided the lowest volatility while paying the highest dividends. Top eight holdings include Kinder Morgan, Chevron, PPL Corporation, Kraft, as well as Philip Morris, and some other ones. This ETF has 20 to 21% exposure to the utilities and the consumer staples market, as well as nine to 12% of the real estate, energy, and healthcare sector allocations. It is evident that the preferred stocks would fill the portfolio of the specific ETF. Currently, the shares of the SPHD are trading at around $46, and during the most recent recession, the price of it dropped to about $30 a share. 
One of the most appealing factors about this specific ETF is that the low volatility and the ability to adapt to different economic cycles and its price recovery is up to par with the rest of the high dividend paying stocks. This ETF pays 3.65% annually with monthly payouts. It also has one of the cheapest expense ratios of 0.3% due to the nature of SPHD. I will assign the risk level of one out of five on the risk scale. Number four on our list today is DIA, SPDR Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF Trust. This ETF doesn't have a high monthly dividend yield. However, it is focused around the investors who are trying to get the capital appreciation on the body of their investment, as well as receiving monthly dividend payouts. Launched in January of 1998, this fund is one of the few to directly play the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Top eight holdings include United Health Group Incorporated, Goldman Sachs Group, they have Home Depot, Microsoft, as well as some other well-recognized brand names. Currently, the price per share is revolving around $322 a share, and if we look at the historic chart of the CTF, it has been able to successfully recover from the most recent recession and is currently trading at levels above pre-pandemic prices. One unique aspect of the CTF is that it exists for over two decades and has shown that it's able to consistently trace Dow Jones Industrial Average as well as pay monthly dividends. The CTF has the lowest expense ratio on the list coming around 0.16% per year. It also offers the lowest dividend yield at around 1.57%. Usually DIA would not make it to the list of my monthly paying dividends just because of such a low interest rate that they pay. However, the price appreciation of DIA and the consistency at which they were able to recover from recession or just pay monthly dividends just puts it ahead of a lot of other investments that pay a lot more in monthly dividends. It not only accounts for a portion of the inflation, but it also offers a fairly stable pattern of appreciation of the share of the CTF. Number three on our list today is going to be SDIV, which is the Global X Super Dividend ETF. In contrast with the previously mentioned monthly paying ETF on this list, SDIV tracks the performance of 100 equally weighted companies across the world and not just in the United States. The companies rank amongst the highest dividend yield equity securities across the globe. One of the reasons of investing into SDIV includes the diversification of the investment portfolio across the markets that are outside of the United States. And investing into SDIV comes with the risk of increased volatility during the economic uncertainty. For instance, if there is a war breaking out somewhere in in the world or if there is higher interest rates that the central banks of different countries are charging. So that comes with a risk of its own. Top eight holdings of this ETF include Electra Consumer Products LTD, BWLPG LTD, Sinopac Engineering Group, as well as some other ones that I would have a difficult time pronouncing. SDIV has the increased exposure of 43.64% to the real estate sector, which is influenced by the increased interest rates. Even though Federal Reserve increases the interest rates, which mainly impacts the United States markets, because of the implications on the United States dollar and its impact on the global economy, it has a ripple effect in impacts real estate markets as well as ETF values and market valuations across the entire world. As we were talking about the increased risk of this ETF, it is important to point out that the price per share never fully recovered from the most recent recession. So it went down to $9.31 and currently trading at about $10.28 a share. When investing into this or a similar ETF, it is very important to understand the inverse correlation between the price valuation of the CTF and the dividends that they pay out. There is a trade-off that the investors would have to make risking to pick up a position of the CTF that is more stagnant than the previously mentioned, but it also provides a higher dividend yield, which is about 6.83% annualized. An epitome of this phenomenon could be traced by looking at the QYLD, which is the Global X NASDAQ 100 covered call ETF, which pays 11.8% yearly dividends. While this percentage is certainly extremely tempting, the price of this stock has never recovered ever since 2013 and has been consistently dropping in value. Going back to SDIV, let's go ahead and take a look at the expense ratio, which is about 0.6%. And we can safely assume that $60 would be charged by the fund on a $10,000 position investment. I would assign five out of five on the risk scale to the specific ETF. Now, congratulations, you made it very far into the video and we're down to our last two ETFs. So if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing. It costs you nothing and it means the world to me even more than QYLD's 12% interest rate. So on this note, please subscribe and let's move on to the last two ETFs. Number two on our list today is the Global X Super Dividend United States ETF with the ticker symbol DIV. 
Just like previously mentioned ETF, DIV is also managed by the Global X Management, but it's focused mainly on the United States-based companies. The objective of this ETF is to track the performance of the 50 equally weighted common stocks, master limited partnerships, and the real estate investment trust funds. By the way, master limited partnerships are publicly traded companies that allow investors to purchase their shares, but also have a tax benefit over private partnerships when profits are taxed only when the investors receive the distributions. Top eight holdings of the CTF include Holly Energy Partners, Iron Mountain Corporation, Cube Smart, Public Storage, as well as many others. DIV has the exposure to the real estate, which is about 17.83%. 16.3% exposure to energy sector, 13.47% of the consumer defensive, and 9.7% exposure to the utilities industry. Current price per share of the CTF is about $20.28, and after the most recent recession, the price of the CTF did not fully recover. Average price level of the DIV is around $25 a share, and they did not fully recover from the most recent steep crash of the value of the CTF. Personally, I would assign four out of five of the risk level to this specific ETF, and I would consider adding to my current position at about $16 per share of the CTF. DIV pays 5.8% in dividends and has the expense ratio of 0.45%, which equals to an annual $45 charge on the investment of a $10,000 position. And number one on our list today is KBWD Invesco KBW High Dividend Yield Financial ETF. This specific ETF focuses at about 90% of its investment into the financial industries, which tend to do a little bit better during the economic environment in which the interest rates are rising. And this is obviously very applicable to the current environment in which we're in. Some of these companies that this ETF holds perform some sort of financial work and profit from it. Examples of that would be investments into banking, insurance, or residential mortgage-backed securities on a leveraged basis. In the environment of the rising interest rates, these companies would normally generate more profit. Holdings of the KBWD are mostly split between 59% of the financial services, 39.89% in the real estate, and just over 1.29% in the industrials. Top eight holdings include companies like Orchard Island Capital, FSKKR Capital, TCG, BDC Incorporation, Capstead Mortgage, we have New Mountain Finance Corp, as well as Goldman Sachs. Currently, KBWD is trading at 17.86 per share, and it was successfully able to recover from its previous recession with a low price of $10.83. The best strategy that I plan on utilizing is buying the dip, holding for a long term, or just dollar cost averaging, and again, holding as a long term investment. Both of these strategies are widely accepted and many different investors know about them, but actually utilizing them is a very different thing. So I would consider adding to my position at about $13.50 a share. Because of a low volatility, relatively quick recovery after the recession, but very high expense ratio of 2.59%, I would assign three out of five risk ratio to the CTF. Individual investors would pay approximately $259 on a $10,000 body of investment. Now that we are familiar with different ETFs across different industries, let's go ahead and take a look at how those monthly calculated dividends are being paid out to the investors. Let's use SPHD or our Invesco S&P 500 high dividend low volatility ETF with a price of $46.35 a share. We would need to divide that by 100 and multiply the annual percentage yield. This would be $46.35 divided by 100 and multiplied by 3.71%. That would equal to $1.72 a share per year. Dividing this number by 12 will give us 14 cents per month in dividends from one share of this specific ETF. This may not seem like a lot of money, but it can help determine what is our goal for each position that we take. Let's say that our goal is to make $50 a month on dividends. We would need to divide $50 by the monthly dividend received from that share, which is 14 cents. We would get to 357.14. This is the number of shares that we would need to have in our portfolio in order to earn $50 a month by holding SPHD shares. While this is roughly a $16,500 position, might not be worth investing specifically all of that money into one specific ETF. However, knowing that strategy, we can determine where we would want to diversify our portfolio in order to reach a specific goal that we set for ourselves. Lastly, for all of those who are watching this video and already have their personal investment accounts set up with 
a brokerage firm or a bank, they have the ability to provide you tools which allow you to see the calculated uh, projected performance of your stocks or the dividends that they pay, as well as ETFs that the dividends they pay. So in this scenario, you can go, for instance, if I have TD Ameritrade, I can go to TD Ameritrade and take a look at how much money I would be getting paid out on a quarterly or a monthly basis according to the holdings that I have in my account. I hope you found this video helpful and there's a lot of work that I put into it in order to make sure that I deliver the product as is. And hopefully you guys were able to find value in this and consider subscribing to the channel. On this note, thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.